Here, we're going to go ahead and remind ourselves of the derivative of the natural log function being 1 over x. So its antiderivative, as we already know, is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Now we already know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So the general antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. And then we had this modification um, shown early on that the integral of e to the kx plus b dx equals 1 over k e to the kx plus b plus c. So this is a rule we memorized early on, but it actually comes from a u substitution. So now we could go ahead and use a u substitution on u equals kx plus b to arrive at the 1 over k constant in the front. But now this one's new, so we do know the derivative of b to the x equals the natural log of b times b to the x, but now we can integrate a general exponential function b to the x dx to be 1 divided by the natural log of b times b to the x plus some constant. Or that's the same as b to the x divided by natural log of b plus c. So when I take the derivative, it's natural log of b times b to the x. When I take the integral, it's b to the x divided by the natural log of b. And then finally, we have the derivative of inverse trig functions. So the derivative of arctan was 1 over 1 plus x squared. So if I integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, I will arrive at arctangent x plus c. So while this does come up, what comes up more often is something a little more general. So right next to it here, if I am asked to evaluate the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared dx, the general solution is going to be 1 over a arctangent of x over a plus c. So I want to keep an eye out for taking a general antiderivative of something of this form. So it's 1 over a squared, so some number squared, plus some variable squared here. And we're actually going to be able to use u substitution on something that looks similar to this in the next few examples. So let's go ahead and take a look at arc sine real quick. So the derivative of arc sine, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So the antiderivative of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is arc sine x plus c. So now, there's another general rule that's associated with this. So if I instead have the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared, that's going to be arc sine of x divided by a plus c. So pretty similar in that the x over a component is there for both the arctan and arc sine antiderivative answers. But the one involving arctan has the 1 over a in front. The one involving arc sine does not have the 1 over a in front of the arc sine function. OK, now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So in this first one, I'm integrating 4 to the power of x dx. So this is a direct application of the general antiderivative of an exponential. So the base here is 4. So the rule told us the answer would be 1 over the natural log of 4 times 4 to the x plus our constant c. Or we could choose to write it as 4 to the x in the numerator over the natural log of 4 plus c. So just a direct application of the general antiderivative of a general exponential function. So now we're trying to evaluate the integral of 7 to the negative x dx. So what we're really doing here is we're applying a u substitution. So u is going to go ahead and be the negative x function, and then du would then be negative dx, and we're only interested in having a dx, so negative du, if I divide both sides by the negative, equals dx. So now this integral becomes negative the integral of 7 to the u du, and now I can apply my general exponential uh, integral rule that I did in the previous example to the integral of 7 to the u du. So I will end up with negative 1 over the natural log of 7, 7 to the u plus c. And then I have to remember that u was negative x in my original function 
uh, was in terms of x. So I have to rewrite this as negative 7 to the negative x divided by the natural log of 7 plus c. And that's my answer. All right, let's move on to another example. So I have the integral of cosine x times 3 to the sine x dx. So I have this exponential function, but I have sine x on the inside of 3 to the x. But the derivative of sine x is cosine x, so I need to use a u substitution first. So let's let u be sine x. Then du is cosine x dx. So I have exactly what I want here. Cosine x dx is du. And then 3 to the sine x will become 3 to the u. So this integral will become 3 to the u du. And now I can apply the general antiderivative here. So that's going to be 3 to the u divided by the natural log of 3 plus c. And then remembering to stick u equals sine x back in for u. So I have the correct variable in place. I have 3 to the sine x divided by the natural log of 3 plus c as my final answer. So now we've covered three different examples involving the general exponential function and using it alongside the substitution rule. Now let's take a look at the integral of 2 divided by 9 plus x squared dx. Now let's just talk about strategies here because since we're in this section we're, we know that we're going to end up using one of the rules that we introduced at the beginning. And so this one specifically is going to end up having an arc tangent in the answer. But by the time we get to the exam, uh, we're going to have so many different strategies that when we look at this problem, that may not just jump right out at us. So since I see a fraction here, and it's a uh, rational function that I can't simplify at all, so I can't divide this into 2 divided by 9 plus 2 divided by x squared, that property does not work. So there's no algebra I can do. Since I see a rational function, I might think, well, why don't I go ahead and let u be 9 plus x squared? But I'm going to get stuck real fast. We can start doing that just to see. If u is 9 plus x squared, du is 2x dx, and that's not going to help me at all. So I have 2 dx, but not an x, and the x is that key. So when we want a modification of the derivative, we want to only be off by a constant or some number, not by an entire variable. So this doesn't end up working. But in fact, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this integral so that we can see that we can apply uh, one of the general antiderivative formulas from the beginning of this section. So let's write this as 2 times the integral of 1 divided by 3 squared plus x squared dx. So if you'll remember, when I had the integral of 1 over a squared plus x squared, that had a formula, and the answer involved arctangent. So I went ahead and just factored out the constant multiple 2 so that it looked more uh, exactly like the original formula that I had at the beginning. So let's just go ahead and bring the constant over. So we have the 2. And our rule told us we were going to have a 1 divided by a. So a in this case is 3 because the rule or the general antiderivative integrand was a squared. So we're going to have 1 over 3 arctan x, just the single variable x, divided by a. And a was 3 plus c. So we can simplify this by writing 2 thirds arctan x divided by 3 plus c. And so this is going to be the general antiderivative of this original function. So this next problem that we're going to take a look at, it has a similar form to this previous one up here. So I have just a constant on the top, just a number. And the bottom here, so this is two things being added together, and each of them are perfect squares. So 9 is a perfect square. I have it as 3 squared. Although that's not required, but I do have a perfect square, and then I have x squared. So that should sort of jump out at you as the uh, arctan as the solution, or part of the solution. So now this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as the integral of 1 divided by 
1 plus the quantity 2x squared dx. So now this looks a lot like the formula that gives me out the solution involving arctangent. However, the formula specifically said we wanted either a squared plus x squared. So in other words, just one variable. So inside here, I don't just have x squared, I have a function squared. I have 2x squared. So what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to use a u substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and let u equal 2x. So now du is 2dx. I'm only interested in a dx, so 1 half du equals dx. So now I can rewrite this integral as 1 half, so bringing the constant to the front, the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared, so I'm going to replace the 2x with my u, du. So my dx, I replace dx with 1 half du, and I let the 1 half come to the front. Well, now I have 1 over 1 plus u squared du. So this is exactly what I need to take the antiderivative and get exactly arctan u plus c. Can't forget the 1 half in the front. But now I need to go back and let u be 2x. So my answer is 1 half arctangent. 2x plus c. So we might need to use a u substitution when I have an integral of this form. And this is a little bit trickier to spot. But again, if I would have tried to use substitution letting u equal the denominator here, I would end up with 8x. And again, there's that extra x that I can't do anything with. So this is the strategy I need to use here and use a u substitution. And I could not just use the formula directly. Um, and and let 2x be the entire x. So I, I only can have one variable in here that's being squared. So the formula is 1 over a squared plus u squared, or just one variable squared, not an entire function. All right, so now the integral of dx divided by the square root of 9 minus x squared. So again, we're in the section of integrating so that we arrive at a transcendental function. So here, we are going to end up with arc sine as part of our answer. But just to discuss strategy, if we would have thought to let u equal 9 minus x squared, then du would be 2x dx. And I don't have an x dx. I only have a dx. So I have this extra x that I can't get rid of. So I'm going to need to try something else. Now. The way I'm going to rewrite this so that it looks like the formula that we previously looked at, I'm going to rewrite this as dx over the square root of 3 squared minus x squared. So I have dx over the square root of a squared minus x squared. And the formula here was arc sine of x divided by a. And a in this case is 3 plus some constant c. So here, it's just important to remember that when it's the square root, it's the arc sine function. And the arc sine function doesn't come along with the 1 over a portion. That's, the, that's only with arc tangent does that part come along. So this is the final answer to this first problem. And then this next problem, I think, is really unique. So I have the integral of dx over tan inverse x times 1 plus x squared. So now here, it looks really different. And what I want to remember for a quick second is that tan inverse is the same as arctangent. So equivalent functions, just different notation. So remember, when I'm thinking u substitution, because right now there's no other method that I have, um, when I'm thinking u substitution, what I want to do is I want to think about, do I see the derivative somewhere else in the function? Well, the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So there's really a 1 up here. So if I let u equal tan inverse x or arctan x, then du is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So sorry, oh, there's my dx. So I have dx over 1 plus x squared. So that's a perfect substitution. So then this integral becomes the integral 
of, well, 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, all of that is du. So there's my du over tan inverse of x, that's the only thing left over, that's just u. So this whole integral here that looked kind of weird at the beginning is really using a u substitution, the integral of du over u. And this is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And now I can go ahead and replace u with arctangent x or tan inverse of x. So let's leave it as tan inverse as the problem was given. So tan inverse of x plus c. So now here's my answer and I was able to use a u substitution and the antiderivative or the, the derivative of the arctangent function to recognize it as 1 over 1 plus x squared. In this next example, we're going to take a look at a definite integral. So the definite integral from 0 to 1 of dx over 1 plus x squared. So the general antiderivative, we're using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1, the general antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared, we've gone over it a few times now, is arctangent x. But since this is a definite integral, I don't want to put plus c, I want to evaluate arctangent x on the interval from 0 to 1. So now we substitute 1, the upper limit of integration, into x. So arctan of 1 minus, now I substitute 0 into x, so minus arctangent 0. And now we'd want to evaluate each of these. So just to remember, and we just talked about this a second ago, tan inverse is the same as arctangent x. Now, if we think about inverse functions, it, we switch the places of x and y. So if I want to find arctangent of 1, or tan inverse of 1, the question becomes, what do I have to plug into tangent? So tangent of what gives me an output of 1. So it turns out tangent of the angle pi over 4 is what's going to give me an output value of 1. So arctangent of pi over 4, or arctangent of 1 is pi over 4. And arctangent 0, so what angle do I have to substitute into tangent uh, do, to get out a value of 0? So what angle do I plug in to get out 0? Well, that happens to be 0. Tangent of 0 is 0. So pi over 4 minus 0, or just pi over 4 is my solution. So we can, of course, use general antiderivatives to evaluate definite integrals using the fundamental theorem of calculus.